All right, welcome to the Titan File webinar on how top law firms drive adoption. My name is Victor Abu Asale. I'm going to be your host for uh, the next 45 minutes or so. Uh, I'm the director of business development at Titan File, and uh, I've got a great uh, presentation here uh, that um, uh, we've put together and used at um, uh, Ilticon before as part of our educational uh, webinar series. And this is what we plan on covering today. So the agenda is um, we're going to talk about what is Titan File, uh, why do law firms use it today. We'll share a couple of success stories about Canadian law firms and how they've successfully deployed Titan File and uh, driven uh, really strong adoption to over 60% of their total headcount. So in a thousand person law firm, over 600 people would use it actively in a given month. Um, we're going to share how Titan File is different. Uh, about halfway through, uh, we're going to try to get into a live demo. And the live demo is really going to focus on the usability of the platform and its simplicity. Uh, so, uh, you know, over the last seven or eight years, we've really, uh, I think, uh, understood that uh, working with law firms, specifically the non-technical users being the lawyers and their support staff, the system has to be absolutely dead simple. Um, and when it's really simple, uh, both the end user as well as the clients uh, end up uh, taking advantage of the platform and really adopting it. And we'll leave some room uh, towards the end of the session for Q&A. Uh, but if questions do come up at any time, please use the uh, chat or questions functionality in the GoToWebinar control panel. And I will try to field those as we go along. Um, uh, throughout the session. You'll notice that uh, your uh, microphones have been muted. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So just so that you can put a uh, face to the uh, to the voice that you're hearing, um, I've been working with Titan File for uh, over six years uh, on uh, this legal technology. And I've been running the uh, ILTA, the International Legal Technology Association webinar series for Titan File for the last couple of years. And we hold those uh, almost monthly. Uh, besides that, I, uh, I, I'm directly client facing, so I work directly with our law firm clients, uh, everything from uh, helping them evaluate the platform all the way through uh, to post deployment and making sure that they're getting the adoption that they need. So I, I, uh, I would consider myself a solutions expert in the topic of Titan file and uh, uh, secure file sharing and client collaboration. So if you have any technical questions, I'd be happy to uh, answer those as well. And lastly, I'm a sushi, sushi enthusiast, um, so if you need any recommendations on where to get good sushi in uh, in Toronto or in Montreal, uh, I'd be happy to share with those uh, share those with you after the session. So for those that uh, haven't uh, had a chance to uh, do a little bit of reading about Titan File, uh, just a quick recap: we are 100% Canadian. Uh, our engineering team, support staff, sales staff, everybody's here. Uh, in uh, in Toronto, uh, and uh, we've become the leading provider of secure file sharing for Canadian law firms, working with over five of the top 20 firms uh, across the country, and uh, we service the entire ecosystem, everything from solo practitioners to small, mid-sized firms, all the way to the national firms like Gowlings, Miller Thompson, Castles Brock, and so on. Beyond Canada, uh, we work with uh, uh, legal professionals and uh, professional service providers across the world, uh, in the United States, Europe, and Asia, with over 100,000 professionals using Titan File today. And uh, we've been regulars at the, uh, the main um, technology legal related trade shows uh, in North America, being uh, ILTACON, Legal Sec, which is the security conference, Legal Tech uh, in New York, which usually happens around January, February of every year, and of course, the Canadian uh, technology trade show. Uh, Taloma. So, uh, outside of the introduction, what is Titan File? So, Titan File really simplifies client collaboration and enables lawyers and their support staff to securely exchange files and messages with clients. So, we have clients that use Titan File today as a secure client portal for client communication and file transfer as well as for ad hoc secure file transfer with external third parties. And I think it's important to distinguish the difference between the two use cases. One, having a secure client portal where you can have that back and forth collaboration for an ongoing transaction or a matter with your client, whether it's a, uh, a litigation 
uh, use case, whether it's a uh, patent filing use case, whether it's personal injury. And secondly, the ad hoc secure file transfer use case where, you know, the lawyer is at their desk living in Outlook. They have a file that they need to send that exceeds the Outlook attachment file size limit. What do they do? So we'll talk about these two use cases as we go through the, uh, through the, uh, through the session here uh, this afternoon and clarify where we could really add some value. So a common question I get in a lot of our uh, initial uh, conversations with IT directors and CIOs is, is Titan file like a secure email or maybe even an FTP? Um, so it, I could definitely see why, why those uh, two would be compared to Titan file. Um, Think of Titan File like an email system. However, Titan File is a communication solution that's used directly by the end user, where typically an FTP site or an FTP solution is used or managed by an IT team. And the reason is because of the usability, right? The FTP site simply handles the large file transfer problem and nothing else. There's no audit logs, there's no collaboration, there's no messaging whatsoever. And when you compare it to secure email, Titanfall absolutely encrypts everything that you send. So I would say the best way to categorize it is that think about the limitations of email. There's really two major categories where, tight, where, where email, excuse me, uh, is limited. First off, there's a security and compliance gap when using regular unencrypted email, especially when you're sending things like uh, PII, which is uh, personal identifiable information, uh, personal health information, uh, credit card numbers, uh, confidential or privileged information around uh, intellectual property. Um, and also the other limitation being on the functionality of email around sending a very large attachment or a very large number of attachments. So think about sending, you know, during a litigation, you need to send a thousand documents. Or think about sending a, uh, a production file during a litigation uh, scenario where that file is 30 gigabytes in size. How do you handle those types of use cases today? So let's keep that in mind as we go through the session. So why do law firms use Titan File today? So again, it's really for those two things, right? They would, the end user, the lawyer, traditionally would like to use email for absolutely everything because they live in Outlook and Outlook is their primary source of communication. It is the number one file sharing solution in the world, email. But when email fails or when there's the shortcomings of email come to fruition, because the files are sensitive or the files are too big for email, that's where you can use Titan file. So let, let me dig into a couple of common use cases that we see across uh, our client base today. First off, let's look at the large file transfer use case. So I mentioned litigation and um, uh, we talked about, you know, during the discovery process, when you're exchanging a lot of information with opposing counsel, possibly co-counsel, even bringing in expert witnesses. Today, a lot of firms will use DVDs and USB drives and send them by courier. Uh, but I can tell you that there's a, a much easier way to do it, uh, a much more secure way, much more uh, instant way, if you will, and much easier way, uh, where you can actually send that 30 gigabyte, 50 gigabyte PSD file, production file, right through the Titan file platform and have a record of when it's delivered and when it's accessed by the opposing party. And another use case that I find around business law, this is a very common one today, and believe it or not, in 2019, this still happens, where you have administrative staff that are breaking up uh, a large PDF file into three or four or sometimes five different pieces and sending them in separate emails because there is no other easy way to send them uh, through email today. So you get a 50 megabyte uh, PDF file that's chopped up into five pieces or maybe three pieces and sent out as one of five email, two of five email. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but this still happens in today's world in professional settings, and there's definitely a better way to do it. So these are a couple of common use cases around the large file transfer problem. Now on the secure file transfer uh, scenario, I mentioned you know, IP law, uh, when you're dealing with trademarks or patent filings, uh, there's multiple parties involved. There's typically a process where you file things and you have to wait for a response. You may be required to uh, submit supporting documentation uh, or revise some information. Uh, on, the, on the business law side, you may want to limit disclosure uh, so that it doesn't affect an acquisition or some sort of uh, purchase agreement. And then a common use case, you know, anything around medical records, whether you're dealing with an insurance company, 
um, there's a sensitivity there and it's the duty of the law firm to ensure that that information is only accessible by the intended recipients. And you could do that through having it encrypted and having an audit record that proves that only the sender and the intended recipient had access to that information. So those are a couple of the use cases or the major buckets of use cases, I would say, where Titan File currently adds value within law firms. Now, when you see the demo, I think you'll see a lot more beyond these two big uh, big buckets of use cases that will, uh, will uh, help the hamster wheel spin, so to speak, and help you see where it can really uh, be used in a collaborative type setting. So uh, if, uh, if you follow the International Legal Technology Association, they, they publish a, uh, a survey uh, annually. Um, I think it's free uh, to all members um, and accessible online. I, I have a copy if anybody needs it. Um, but one of the biggest challenges for CIOs and, and IT leaders uh, within law firms, as reported by the tech survey, was balancing security with usability. So finding solutions that their users will adopt yet still meet uh, the security and compliance requirements of the law firm, right? Having those uh, checks and balances in place, both on encryption, where the data resides, whether it's in Canada or the United States, uh, having compliance with things like GDPR and HIPAA, um, but also having a solution that your end users are going to uh, adopt and and um, and embrace. Because the worst thing that can happen is that you bring a solution in that nobody ends up using because there's too many steps involved. It's too cumbersome, either on the sender or the client side. And they end up using something like a personal Dropbox account because it's just easier. It's just easier for them to complete that task in a way that they're familiar with without having to go through your enterprise uh, approved tool. So balancing security and usability is the number one reported challenge uh, for CIOs in North American law firms, according to the International Legal Tech Survey uh, from this past year. Why that's important uh, is because uh, security is a is actually a major uh, item uh, within law firms. I mean, when I started working with Titan File in 2012, and we went to our first conference uh, in 2012, it was Legal Tech. If I told somebody, uh, you know, uh, that we are hosted in a secure cloud, uh, people would look at you sideways and say, "Wow, you're crazy." Um, and it was because uh, maybe the technology hadn't matured yet. Uh, and security is a real risk. And even though people don't talk about law firms being hacked or, or being targets of, of major security breaches, there is at least one very big public example in the world that I think everybody's by now familiar with uh, from 2015, where the, uh, the large uh, international firm in Panama, associated with the Panama Papers, uh, had over uh, 2.6 terabytes of data uh, leaked uh, due to a handful of different issues, not necessarily just related to uh, insecure email, but they had a lot of client data that was leaked over 11 and a half million files. And it, um, it caused all kinds of ripple effects. Even uh, most recently, I think earlier this, this month, there was a big article in the Globe and Mail about some of the uh, ripple effects that are still happening um, with uh, uh, tax related issues um, uh, related to uh, information that was leaked from uh, this Panama Papers uh, uh, issue uh, back in 2015. So it definitely affects uh, people for a very, very long time when confidential information gets into open hands. And that's why security is very, very important. But I think we already all know that. So why are some of these law firms today uh, using Titan File? I mentioned uh, Titan File is currently being uh, used by five of the top 20 firms by size, but also across the small medium uh, sector uh, across the country in both Canada and the United States, as well as in um, uh, more traditional and established organizations like banks, uh, where they're also concerned about uh, secure electronic communication and want to make it easier to be able to collaborate with their clients and exchange information, regardless if that information is business related or uh, medical records. Um, so the, the combination where the, the common thing I would say um, amongst our clients, uh, law firm clients, um, when they uh, were approached to uh, by us is that they had something in place. They had some sort of plugin from an email management system uh, where they were able to satisfy, at least at the surface, a large file transfer problem. Uh, they had some way um, that IT could handle requests on behalf of the users. Um, but as these requests start growing, uh, 
uh, it becomes more and more important to empower the end user and allow the attorney and their support staff or the lawyer and their support staff to be able to complete these very simple tasks because they're really as simple as sending an email. You just have to have the right tool for it. And so the reason why we, we believe that making it easy, is, easy to use is so important because making it simple and easy to use ultimately leads to better adoption. And as I mentioned earlier within the session, having better adoption not only increases the productivity of those fee earners, but it also improves security and compliance. Because when you have everybody within the firm using one approved solution that handles the vast majority of all use cases you might come across, whether it's sending a medical record, whether it's uh, collaborating with the client on a, on a uh, patent, uh, or whether it's sending a really large uh, production file in a litigation use case, if you have one solution that can address all of your uh, collaboration and secure file sharing needs, you're going to have uh, better productivity, better security and compliance, and ultimately, uh, it's going to be a, a solution that's adopted across the firm. And how can you make it easy to use? We found that we have a, a two-punch combination, uh, if you will, uh, that has been absolutely uh, fantastic in driving adoption. First and foremost, we have a secure uh, Outlook add-in that enables you to send large files of any size directly out of Outlook. There's no limitations. It's not one or two gig limitation. Uh, you can send a, a, lar a large file of any size, any type, right through Outlook uh, without having to uh, modify your exchange uh, uh, limits uh, on your email server. And you could do that by integrating this within your document management system as well. So you can attach a file like you normally would directly out of your document management system, compose an email, and the only difference for the end user is hitting that secure send button on the screen where that orange arrow is versus hitting the send button with Outlook. So in addition to the Outlook add-in, which really helps with that ad hoc uh, use case that we talked about earlier, where the lawyers at their desk, they need to send a file, one click, it's gone. We also have a web application that works on any of your favorite web browsers, whether you're preferring to use Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer 11 or higher, or even the new Microsoft Edge um, uh, web browser, as well as you know, if you have uh, Mac users, it works well on Safari as well. But the idea is that for your power users, the folks that are doing the collaboration, in addition to being able to send files, you can actually send messages. So very much mimicking email behavior and facilitating uh, the natural correspondence that you would have in email, uh, yet doing it in a secure way without the limitations of file size or the amount of files that you have. So I'll be able to showcase this web application piece in the demo uh, in just a few short minutes here as we uh, get through the presentation. And you'll be able to see uh, uh, the amazing simplicity and how easy it is to use this platform. So before we jump into that, I thought it would be really important to share with you um, uh, a handful of uh, capabilities. Um, we can call them differentiators if you like. It's really not a feature list, but they're functionalities that our clients found extremely important that help them drive adoption. And I'd be curious to get your feedback at the end of the session if you know if you are experiencing some challenges with with software adoption, um, or if you if you believe that you have great adoption, um, if some of these things resonate with you. So let me go through some of these. And uh, I'd love your feedback. So first and foremost, I mean, this is a no-brainer. It's got to be easy to use. And when we say easy to use, we're talking about making it as easy as sending an email. We're talking about being web browser agnostic, no software to install, and importantly, from a security perspective, no Java, Flash, or any kind of plugins. And given that we're a Canadian company working with uh, Canadian uh, law firms, uh, it should be available in English and French so that you can. Uh, meet all of your stakeholders' needs, regardless of where they reside in the country. And as a result, when you have something easy to use, it's going to result in adoption by your staff and, most importantly, positive feedback from your clients. Next one, um, unlimited file transfer. When we talk about unlimited, we're talking about being able to handle all the use cases that you can think of within the firm, whether it's sending that very simple 50 megabyte file or sending a 50 gigabyte production file uh, quickly and easily uh, to opposing counsel or an external party. And uh, we've got examples where um, you, know, you have a use case where you need to send just one file and other 
much more complicated business cases where you have over 100,000 files that need to be shared with a large group of people. And the Titan file system uh, is scalable and robust enough to handle the plethora of use cases that you can think of. Um, being able to do things like uploading entire folder structures without having to zip them in advance. So having native capability to uh, replicate the folder structure that lives on your computer directly in Titan file without having to do any zipping. Uh, being able to upload these really, really large files with blazing fast upload speeds. When our clients did some benchmark testing, they found that Titan files at least twice as fast as any other solution that they compared it to on the same network. So imagine being able to upload a 10 gigabyte file in 10 to 15 minutes, where traditionally it might take you over an hour. These types of things really uh, speak to the simplicity of the platform. You'll get better adoption and uh, uh, ultimately your people will be more productive. There are no bandwidth limits. There are no st uh, storage limits. Uh, there are no file type limitations, whether you're sending video, audio files, Microsoft Office documents, anything you can think of. And if you ever have a interruption in your network, the system will auto resume the upload for you. So unlimited file transfer is a very, very important feature for our clients today. Next, from a security perspective, uh, given that we're a Canadian company, our Canadian clients want their data to be stored in secure Canadian data centers. So uh, today we use the Microsoft Azure uh, infrastructure, which um, uh, lives in Toronto and backs up for business continuity and uh, disaster recovery into Quebec City. We offer end-to-end -end encryption, um, both in, in transit and at rest. And there's also the option for you to utilize an external key management solution where you get to own your own encryption keys, meaning we as the service provider don't have access to your data. This gives you an unprecedented level of protection. In addition to uh, our security capabilities, uh, because we work with all these massive enterprise clients, we, we do monthly vulnerability scanning and we, we do uh, annual penetration testing with verified external third-party uh, security companies. Number four, authentication. Uh, a lot of our a lot of our clients um, use Active Directory today, um, and single sign-on was very very important for them to drive staff adoption. So single sign-on enables you to use your existing uh, credentials for your corporate credentials. Sorry, using your existing corporate credentials to authenticate into Titan File without ever having to create or manage yet a second set of passwords. So we found that removing that friction step is really really important, whether you're using the web application or the Outlook plugin. Uh, similarly, for external users, whether they're your clients, uh, guest users, uh, expert witnesses, or opposing counsel, uh, you can customize a password policy and you have the option to enforce a two-factor authentication via voice or SMS for those external parties as well. And we have lots of clients that are doing that today. And finally, we do account automatic account provisioning. So you'll see when we go through the demo that you don't actually have to create accounts for external users. The accounts get done automatically as part of the workflow, removing yet another friction point to uh, having your external users adopt and use Titan file with you. Data residency and retention. So we talked about uh, uh, everything being stored in Canada with redundancy and geo-replication. Uh, in addition to that, we allow you to customize your own data retention policy. So we know that IT directors and CIOs today don't want things to linger or be on Titan file forever. They want things to be on Titan file for a short period of time so that uh, the collaboration or the transaction is complete and everything must go back and live in the document management system. So for that, we give you a customizable data retention policy that allows you to auto clean things up and ensure for both uh, uh, good governance, um, as well as um, uh, keeping the system clean, uh, you have the ability to completely control how long stuff stays on Titan file. You're in total control there. And I mentioned that we uh, we comply with all the major privacy regulations, uh, the Canadian one being PIPEDA, uh, HIPAA in the United States, GDPR in Europe, as well as PCI um, uh, DSS. Notifications and history. Uh, this was another very important uh, item for uh, all of our clients. So from a logging perspective, um, having delivery reports that prove when something is delivered and when something is accessed, including an SMTP stamp. So being able to prove that something was delivered at a specific before a specific deadline, being able to prove that something was accessed by the uh, recipient party 
whether it's a client where you're just trying to verify that something has actually been accessed and you can continue moving forward, or whether it's in an adversarial situation where you need to prove that opposing counsel, in fact, did have access to that, to that information. So we offer you a detailed audit trail, an email delivery report, and there's, of course, customizable notifications that come in both email as well inside the application. So things like read receipts, uh, these things are available both in email as well as inside the app. We'll see both of those in the demo too. So behind every great product, there needs to be amazing customer support. Uh, and we offer unlimited support for administrators, trainers, and staff, as well as your clients and partners. Uh, and it's available through email, phone, and chat. Uh, we have an extensive knowledge base available, uh, full of online videos, tutorials, and a really great how-to articles in our support portal. And I think um, this speaks, you know, be, this being an important item for our clients speaks to our really great retention rate and super low churn rate amongst our enterprise clients that we've had over the last six and seven years. This Outlook uh, button, uh, for those that do embrace uh, Outlook add-ons, uh, I know not everybody does, but for those that do, uh, I believe this is the magic button. Um, in our clients that have deployed this as part of the standard image uh, uh, within their organization, and we're able to do that because of our unique licensing model that makes it cost effective for you to do so, this button has driven adoption through the roof. Uh, we found that clients uh, that initially started off in a pilot phase, um, we have uh, examples amongst the top 20 firms where adoption is exceeding 60% of total headcount on a monthly active basis. 60% of total headcount. So it's not a small department. Uh, it's not a pocket of users. It's 60% of every single individual within the law firm actively using a secure uh, file sharing and collaboration solution in any given month. And I think these numbers are, are absolutely astronomical. So um, let's jump into the demo. We're right on schedule. It's 1230. Uh, there's one more slide that we'll wrap up with, but we'll do that after the demo. Uh, let me go ahead and switch gears here, bring the screen um, back up where we can show you how the Titan file system works. So maybe just before I jump into the demo, there's a question that came in uh, from one of our um, attendees this afternoon asking how Titanfall works with Outlook uh, for iOS and other mobile applications. Uh, so as you'll see today, um, the uh, all the email notifications that go through the system, this is a great question, all the email notifications that go through the system when you do something in Titanfall, whether you're using the Outlook plugin or you're uh, using the web application, there's an email notification that goes back and forth between the sender and the recipient. So you'll always be in the know of what's happening in your account, regardless of what type of email system you use, whether you're using uh, an iOS um, um, mail application, Gmail, Hotmail, or your Outlook system. The Outlook add-in button, um, this one here, let me just bring it up on the screen. This Outlook add-in button that we have today is currently only available with, uh, with, with Outlook, with Outlook for Windows. So this large attach file button and the secure send button together are currently available for Outlook for Windows, um, but we'd be happy to explore uh, supporting it for Outlook iOS if it's something that's important to you. Love to have that conversation offline and dig into that a little bit further. Thank you for that question. All right, um, let's go through uh, this demo. And so uh, what I'm showing up on the screen right now is just the uh, the login page for, for Gowlings. And you can see here we've set up uh, single sign-on for them as well. So when their internal staff uh, hits their custom login page, they automatically get authenticated and log into Titanfall. So what happens when you log in? This is my Titanfall demo account. So you can see here in the top right-hand corner, I'm logged in as Victor. So um, before I explain what you're seeing on the screen, I want to take you on a quick workflow uh, showcasing what it would look like for myself. Uh, let's assume that I'm a lawyer at your law firm and I wanna share a package of documents with my clients. The package of documents is privileged and sensitive, so I wanna make sure it's going through an encrypted and tracked system. And I'm gonna share a handful of documents, so it's something that I wouldn't necessarily do through an Outlook attachment. Uh, 
Now, I want you to uh, remember that the client has never used Titanfall before. This is going to be their absolute first exposure. So, so keep that in mind uh, when we're going through the, uh, the demo here. And I want to really focus on the simplicity and the usability of the platform. So let's go through that workflow, and then we'll come back and dissect what you're seeing on the screen right now and explain what all the buttons are. So first and foremost, as a lawyer at your law firm, and I want to share a package of documents with my clients, first and foremost, in the top left-hand corner, I'll go ahead and create a new channel. Think of creating a new channel as if you're composing a new email. There's a lot of similarities with how Titanfall works and how email works. So creating a new channel in Titanfall simply uh, mimics you creating a new email in Outlook. When you create a new channel, it's going to ask you for a channel name or a subject line for this correspondence. So I'll call this channel demo for Canadian law firms. Next, I want to go ahead and add my recipients or collaborators. So all I need to know is the email address of my recipient. I don't need to involve IT at this point. I don't need to ask anybody to set up any credentials. I don't need to have a password created that I'm gonna send my user. I just need to know the email address of my recipient, just like I would if I was sending a regular email out of Outlook. So this is the email address of the recipient, and let's call this person John. Of course, we could repeat that process if we have multiple co collaborators. And the system can handle uh, any number of collaborators. We had one example of a class action lawsuit uh, in, uh, in uh, a law firm in Canada that had over 2,500 contacts uh, within one Titan file channel. So the system is really uh, there to be able to handle one-on-one -on -one correspondence or a very large group of people. Now, once I've established my collaborator or my recipient, I'm going to go ahead and attach files or folders using either the attach file button or the attach folder button. So by hitting the attach files button, I can go ahead and multi-select a handful of different files of various sizes, regardless of their type. And you can see they quickly uh, upload and attach. If I had a folder structure on my computer, just like here, this demo folder that has a subfolder called evidence, I can actually upload the entire folder structure without having to zip it first by hitting upload, confirming it, and it will upload it and show it to us in exploded view. Now, there will be a view where you'll be able to navigate that folder structure in a traditional folder tree. We'll get to that in just a second. But the reason why we show it to you in exploded view is so that you can remove certain files if you don't want to include them as part of your, uh, part of your upload. Now that we've uh, completed our attachments, if we want to, we can go ahead and include a message. So just like an email today, if you're in Outlook sending a package of attachments to your client, rarely would you send it without a message body or some context. And so we'll give you the same capability within Titanfile to include a message. So I will say, hi, John. Hi, John, attached to the files for your review, please check them out and get back to me. Hit send and off it goes. So if we were to recap just the three very simple steps that we just took, to send something to somebody that's never used Titanfall before, I simply create a channel, add them to the channel and upload the files. Three very simple steps and there's only one way to do it. Very, very straightforward, right? So what happens now when I hit that send button, what does John see as the recipient? What does the client see? What is their experience like when they receive this package of information? So I have, I have John's uh, email account here. This is the client's inbox. In this case, they are using Gmail. They could have been using Outlook. They could have been using a, uh, an iOS application uh, or Hotmail. In this case, they're using Gmail. The subject line for the email that's waiting for them in their inbox is demo for Canadian law firms. Now, recall, that's what we chose as the subject line of this channel when we created it within Titanfall. So when the client opens up that email, they'll notice that there's actually no file, attach, uh, no file attachments in this email. It is simply a notification email. This email template is fully brandable and customizable, meaning that your law firm logo can replace ours in the top right-hand corner. So instead of saying Titanfall, it'll say your law firm. And here at the bottom where there's currently a footer with Titan Files contact info, it can be replaced with your contact info or an email disclaimer. 
these these two options are very popular within our existing law, uh, law firm clients. So what does it actually tell the client in this email? So it says, hey, Victor shared 10 files with you, gives us the name of the files, also includes the contents of the message. Hi, John, attached are the files for your review. Please check them out and get back to me. Now, remember, John has never used Titanfall before. This is his absolute first exposure. So when he hits the big green button called Access Files, the Titan file system automatically detects that, hey, wait a second, this individual has never used Titanfall before. We're going to go ahead and create them a guest account on your secure client portal. It's a one-step process. It takes less than five seconds. And all that the client has to do is simply choose their own password. And they're going to use that password for any ongoing correspondence, whether it's to communicate with you or anybody else from within your law firm in the future. So they're going to get a guest account that's automatically created for them on the fly, and they're going to be able to use that guest account to communicate with anybody from within your law firm now or in the future. So John simply selects a password of his choice, hits proceed to files, and instantaneously, John is taken directly to where those files have been shared. He's not taken to some orientation page or some weird video that he has to navigate and figure out where he's got to go. No, it takes him directly into the channel where those files live. So you can see here in the top right-hand corner, we're now logged in as John, who is the recipient or the client in this case. And you might have already come to the conclusion that the user interface or the user experience for the recipient is identical to what it was for the sender. So your lawyer and your client are going to see exactly the same thing. So what can John do once he's in this, uh, in this channel? So quickly, when he scrolls down a little bit, You'll notice that a download all button appears that allows him to download or capture the entire uh, package of documents, whether it's two files or a thousand files, one click is gonna download everything. Alternatively, he can choose to download the Gowling success story simply by clicking on the name of the file. Every time that a file is downloaded or accessed, the sender is gonna get an email notification that's, that confirms that that file has been accessed. So there's always gonna be a read receipt that goes back to the sender. So in addition to being able to quickly and easily retrieve files that have been sent to him by his lawyer, John can actually send stuff back to his lawyer. So this is not a one-way communication system, right? Just like email, where you can send and receive, Titanfile gives you that functionality as well. Now, granted, there's going to be lots of use cases where you're just delivering documents to the outside party, right? Whether it's to your client or opposing counsel, and that's totally okay. But there's going to be lots of other use cases where you may require supporting information from the other side. You may require um, uh, a revision on a file. They may have a question for you. You can facilitate all of those use cases within Titanfall. So John, if he wants to send a revision or a, a supporting document, he can simply go in uh, to his. Uh, he can simply go into his uh, files. Go ahead and upload the file that he wants to send, and can say, uh, "Thanks, Victor. Got the files." Here's a revision. For your consideration. Thanks, Victor, got the files. Here's a revision revision for your consideration. Hit send and off it goes. And so just like the email notification that I showed you earlier in Gmail that John received, that same email notification is now going to get sent to Victor and he's going to see it. But ultimately, what we're seeing here within the Titan file interface in this conversation tab that we're currently in is a chronological uh, thread of the messages and files shared between the two parties. So this really is mimicking what an email thread would look like. So whether this is one transaction or a matter, it could be a week long, it could be a six month long collaboration. Everything that's sent and received by the different parties is all gonna be available to you with the latest message always at the top in this conversation tab. Now, alternatively, you can imagine that when you have a big, uh, uh, a large number of files, excuse me, you may want to navigate a folder structure or see the files in a list view. And so you can simply switch into the files tab and work out of the files tab instead of the conversation tab. And we'll give it just a second here and it'll load and you'll be able to view a traditional list view of files and folders. So this view strips out all the messages and gives you a more traditional view that you may be more accustomed to. Here you can organize your, your files based on file name, who uploaded them based on owner, 
and of course, when they were uploaded. So you can see there's the demo folder. I'm currently selecting it on the screen. There's the demo folder that we, uh, we uploaded to begin with. Uh, and so you can navigate that folder structure just like how it lived on your computer directly within Titan File. So you have full file management capabilities within the Titan File Files tab where you can navigate between folders uh, as well as create new folders if you need to and move files between folders. So full file management capabilities if you're dealing with a large volume of files. And this is something that's actively being used um, uh, by our clients that are dealing with high volume of data. So you can work based out of the conversation tab or the files tab. Both tabs are interchangeable. It's completely up to you which one is your preference and which one makes sense in that specific use case. The one last item that I wanted to show you within this uh, within this uh, uh, view is the history tab. So the history tab is that audit trail that we were talking about that's so important that shows you when files have been sent and when files have been accessed. In addition to that, we capture every activity that took place within the channel. When you gave access to somebody, when you added new files, when they were downloaded. So here's a, uh, a record of when that download all button was clicked and subsequently when the Gowling success story was downloaded simply by hitting the file, uh, the file name. So we keep track of everything here, and this is available to the end user at their fingertips. It's not a IT function that's hidden in some uh, you know, uh, buried administrative console. This is uh, information that's readily available for the end user so that they can verify on the fly, hey, has the client opened that file? Can we confirm that we sent this file or this package before a specific deadline? It's all available right at their fingertips to the end user. And if we switch back into Victor's view, everything you see here, the conversation tab, the files, and the history tab, everything's exportable. So if you need to keep a copy of something offline, whether it's in the DMS under the appropriate matter folder, you can export the history tab, you can export the conversation, as well as the entire package, everything there is that happened here within Titan file can be exported with one click uh, and be stored uh, locally if you need to keep a local copy of it. So if we collapse this channel, this is the, if you remember, this is the view. Sorry about that. This is the view that uh, we started the demo on uh, at the beginning. And this probably makes a lot more sense now that we've gone through the example. But what you're seeing on the screen in my active channels view is different channels that are currently uh, being used to communicate with different parties, whether it's multiple clients, whether it's different transactions, uh, whatever the case may be. But each one of those channels is completely private and independent of each other, and they have content in there that's uh, being shared with specific individuals. Now, the difference is what the client sees, if we collapse the channel for John, you'll notice that he only sees the channel that he's been exclusively invited into. And that's the main difference between your staff member and the external parties, is that the staff member is gonna be able to manage multiple channels at once and work on multiple matters, multiple transactions, whereas your client is gonna only see the specific channel that they've been invited into. And so there's a lot more uh, information here that we can go through, lots of different feature sets, security controls, we can review the data retention policy, uh, lots of really neat capabilities on search. Um, and I think that uh, that is worthy of a deeper dive, uh, maybe in an offline session. Uh, but the purpose of uh, today's demo was to just give you a high level overview of how our clients are currently using Titan file in a variety of use cases, whether it's simply to send one large file or to send a large number of files or to just collaborate on a specific transaction or matter. Uh, and they can use either the web application or the Outlook uh, add-in for that. And so hopefully uh, in, in the last 15 minutes, I've been able to uh, really showcase to you the simplicity of the platform and why simplicity drives adoption and makes uh, our end users more successful. So just to wrap things up before we jump into the q and I wanted to leave you with one, um, with one quote. And this is the last slide here. Uh, this is why... Um, uh, the IT leadership team at Gowlings chose to use Titan File, and they had other solutions in place before. Uh, but this is a quote from our success story that's available. And uh, the IT manager there says, we really gauge the success of a product by three main things, reliability, usage, and feedback from the users. And Titan Files passed all these metrics with flying colors.
So I will leave you with my contact information uh, in case you have any additional questions or if you'd like to receive a copy of the recording to share it with your colleagues that weren't able to attend. Uh, my email is there. It's victor at titanfile.com as well as my direct extension. Feel free to reach out with any questions whatsoever, uh, whether technical or use case specific, or I'd be happy to um, uh, answer any questions you may have. And uh, with that, I will uh, start the Q&A session and go through the questions and uh, read them out for everybody so that we can uh, go through them together. Okay, we have a question here uh, regarding file size. Uh, what is the maximum file size that you can send within Titan File? Uh, so we have a few different plans within our um, uh, within our platform. Uh, the majority of our small, medium, and large businesses uh, use the professional plan, and with our professional plan, uh, we virtually offer unlimited file size. So if you need to send that 10 gigabyte production file or even larger, you can do that through the Titan File. Uh, professional plan. Um, so think of it as no limitations. There's no limitations on file size, file type, or file quantity uh, when you're sending through Titan file. Thank you for the question. We have a question about um, what appears in the sender's outbox when using uh, uh, the Outlook client. Uh, that's a great question. So we actually capture um, uh, exactly what the uh, recipient sees in your sent folders box. So, and that can be configured. Uh, so if you are using the Outlook uh, add-in to send really, really large files, you may want to choose to configure it so that you're not keeping a copy of the file um, because that may uh, uh, may add a little bit of, uh, uh, it may clog up your inbox or your, your Outlook uh, storage. Um, but uh, our clients, you have the option to whether or not you want to keep a copy of exactly what's sent, uh, including the message, uh, as well as the metadata and the actual attachment, or just the message and the metadata to prove that something was sent. Uh, and in our delivery logs, uh, we include the SHA1 hashing of the file so that you can prove that the file that was sent is exactly the file that you have uh, locally. Um, so, but uh, the short answer is in the sent items folder, uh, we keep a copy of exactly what the client receives uh, from that email notification. Thank you for that question. Uh, we have a question about licensing. Um, do guest accounts require a license? Uh, so no, um, that's a great question. But within the Titan File platform, only members of your staff, uh, members of your um, uh, of your organization need to be licensed. And so uh, you have an unlimited number of guest users or guest accounts, uh, uh, regardless if it's being used by opposing counsel, expert witnesses, clients, uh, vendors, uh, and so on. So you only need uh, clients, uh, uh, you only need licenses for your staff members. Uh, question about uh, integration with iManage DMS. That's a great question. Um, so yes, we do have integration with uh, the iManage DMS, uh, both in the Outlook, let me bring that up, both within Outlook and within the web application. And our clients absolutely love this connector. Uh, so uh, because of the way that we've built the, um, the Outlook uh, add-in, we don't currently change how you attach files. And so you can actually bring in files directly from your document management system into your Outlook message. And the only difference is the fact that you hit the secure send button versus the send button. And as a result, uh, this become, uh, this Outlook add-in makes it um, DMS agnostic. So whether you're using iManage, uh, OpenText, eDocs, or NetDocuments, our, client our clients use all three of those. Um, uh, this is the uh, Outlook add-in will automatically integrate with all those. Now within the web application, I'm glad you asked that question. Let me go back to um, let me go back to the demo here for a second. So when I in the demo earlier, when I hit this attach file button, it opened up my local uh, dialog box for my computer or my network drives. If you have a connector, uh, the the connector um, installed, um, it will give you the option to upload a file directly from iManage or from your local um, uh, from your local machine. That connector is called Link to DMS. I'm going to write it on the screen right now. Uh, there it is, L I N K two, the number two DMS. It is a product that's offered by Arbro Solutions. Uh, they're a partner of ours uh, here, based out of Toronto as well. 
And we have a lot of uh, uh, Canadian uh, clients that have this connector in place. And it basically uh, makes it really seamless for you to bring files out of in and out of iManage um, uh, into the Titan file uh, web application. Uh, if you bear with me one second here, I actually have a, uh, a small GIF that I can put up on the screen to show you exactly what that looks like live. So I'm just going to pause the screen and uh, find that for you. Shouldn't take too long. And here we go. So momentarily it should play. You can see here when you hit the attach files button, it's actually been programmed to open up iManage directly. You can select the files you want from the appropriate uh, uh, matter folder uh, and have them as a copy and bring them into Titan file and off they go. So what that really does is it saves your staff a step from having to uh, manually export the file to a local uh, folder first and then bring it in Titan file. You can seamlessly bring the file directly from iManage into Titan file, vice versa. If you have a file that you've received and you want to file it into iManage, you can do so by saving it directly into the appropriate matter folder. You don't have to download it first and then file it manually. So this link to the MS connector has been seamlessly configured to allow you to work with iManage and it really removes all friction uh, when moving files between the two systems. It's, it's quite, uh, quite an amazing tool. Thank you for that question. I think we have time for a couple more questions. Let me just go through the list here. Okay, there's a question on uh, the encryption. Um, can you explain how the client side encryption works? Uh, so if you recall, uh, let me see if I can bring that back up from our security slide. So today, the industry uh, best practice is to use encryption both in transit and at rest. So ensuring that the connection between your computer and our servers and from our servers to your client uh, is encrypted, but also ensuring that when the file is being stored uh, in our secure data centers uh, with Microsoft Azure in Canada, that that file is actually encrypted on disk. So that's the uh, kind of industry best practices. To go above and beyond that, we offer uh, external key management capability. Uh, it's the fourth point here on the slide where you get to actually own the encryption keys. And so what that means is that uh, the file gets encrypted before it comes to us and we don't have access to those encryption keys. And so we can't decrypt those files. In fact, nobody can, not the government, not any other uh, person that gets their hands uh, on these files, except you and the intended recipient. So this gives you an unprecedented level of protection where not even your uh, security, um, uh, you know, we would, in traditional sense, we would be your uh, security custodian uh, if we did not uh, use external key management. And that is the norm. Um, but beyond that, if you do use this external key management capability uh, with our partner uh, Hitachi uh, Credion, uh, then we don't have access to the encryption keys and nobody can decrypt these files except you and the intended recipient because the encryption is happening before it comes to us as your provider. Thank you for that great question. Okay, looks like I don't see any other questions in the queue. Um, last call for any lingering questions. We've had some great questions so far. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, if there are no further questions, again, feel free to give me a shout uh, offline. I'd be happy to answer anything that may come up uh, after the session. Um, I really appreciate uh, you spending uh, the last 45 or so minutes together with me. Hopefully the, um, uh, the webinar was informative and has piqued your curiosity. And uh, with that, I thank you. And uh, we now conclude the webinar. Thanks again.